Lisa Ann is here. Lisa Ann, a good friend of the shows now, one of my favorite guests that we have on, uh, always has basically just a lifetime. I feel like we have you on every, like, couple months. It's great. And in between times, you have a lifetime of stories in those two months. And now I put notes in my phone for you. For me? Well, yeah, because we do so well together with these. Yeah, yeah. And your your fans love it. Yeah. So it never gets flat or dull. And, and like, random things happen. Like, one of the things we'll talk about with the ads, when that happened four weeks ago, Uh you were actually the first person I thought of. It wasn't like, (laughs) I'm horrified this is happening. I was like... This is a great story for Sam. Right. I can't wait. And I started screen grabbing him right away <laughs> so that I wouldn't forget. Because, you know, you troll through your photos to yeah. see what you should delete to make room for other photos. And you're like, that's right. I should hit him up. We got to talk about this. You know I'm going to want to hear about it. Yeah. We had Jason. You know Jason Ellis? Yes. Who does. He came in last week. Okay. And I just started talking to him. And there were, like, rumors about that he had kind of hinted at the fact that he hooks up with guys now as well as girls. Okay. So I was like, that's what I'm curious about. Switch hitter. And I just started, yeah. And I started asking him all kinds of questions about it. And he was he totally poured his guts out, everything. To, and it was awesome. But then he went back to L.A. And, like, he went on his show. And, like, the first thing he said was, yeah, I did Sam Roberts' show. That guy asks a lot of questions. <laughs> like, <laughs> Well, it's an interview. I was like, yeah, but I get curious about this stuff. Like, yeah, I want to know. You bring out other things than other people. They think they could breeze over, and then they're going to talk about, so I watched this movie yesterday. Right, and I like, go, enough you about the movie. About what that? did you just say? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. This is big. Let's really get into detail on this. Exactly. Uh uh, I don't even, I, I always feel like I want to pick up where we left off, but I don't even remember. I remember, uh, here's what I remember. You're going to come in on your birthday. I broke a toe. And talk about China, mm-hmm. but you'd broken your toe. And, and a so bone you, in my foot. Uh, you know how I healed it? How? Cryotherapy. What's cryotherapy? You go into the freeze tank, okay? Mm-hmm. The most you can go in for three minutes, you start at a minute and a half. Is it actually it's freezing? 200 below freezing. Jesus. Naked, but you have earmuffs, uh-huh. face masks, so you're not breathing in. Right. Uh, socks, so your ears don't get cold. You don't want your, <laughs> your extremities will freeze and fall off, probably. Really? You wear gloves. I wear two pair of gloves, socks, and these rubber clogs. And you go in there and I just stretch. And I, you feel brand new. You do. And two days after that, two services, two sessions, I was in my regular shoes again back at the gym. Wow. No medicine. No, like, because I guess with a broken foot, you just have to let it heal. There's no, you call like, the doctor, he's like, you gotta lay with your foot elevated for two weeks. I ain't got that kind of life. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. It's not comfortable in your butt. Like, you can only work on your couch and your computer for so long till your butt goes numb. Right, right. And you can't have, you can't I have can't your butt going numb. numb. Numb butt? No, 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 no. I don't no. want to flatten it. No. It's, you like to stay home, but you gotta move around a I little gotta bit. I gotta move around. It's so <laughs> yeah. weird. You think when someone tells you you get to lay on the couch, because I wanna lay on the couch, yeah. but when someone tells you to lay on the couch, you're like, Hell nah. I got too much going on. I got. I want to walk up my stairs. <laughs> right. I want to do stuff. <laughs> right. Right. I'm swim. And so, so the the cryotherapy actually worked. It does. And funny enough, this first episode of Ballers that aired this week on HBO. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm. I'm gonna... He's in his own cryo tank Who in his is? backyard, Ricky. Oh. And you can get him at home, but your head has to be out, so it's more like a sauna, and just your body is in. And that's what most the athletes have. I see. But you have to have a medical personnel on staff to be able to go in there where you're in the actual room because oh, you so... could freeze to death and die in there. Right. So if you're gonna go in below your head. Then you have to have like a, a medical person. Yeah, it's person at a there. real center where there's a doctor on board, and, and that's what you like the I real, love, the real I, one. I just like the fact that you're in a whole room where you can stretch and really like if you've been at your computer a lot, move around. And I like breathing in the cold air. And it's only like three minutes. Three minutes, but three minutes seems like a long time when you're freezing. Oh my god! And you have to do it naked. You can't go in with like a jacket. Guys, a lot of guys go in with like shorts and a t-shirt. Uh huh. I mean, guys would probably rather go in underwear or something. Right. But I do it yeah, right before I go to the gym, and I feel brand new when I get there. I'm like, oh. I've just. I mean, there are other extremities that guys sure. have to worry about. I don't want to get frostbite. And, Serious shrinkage. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you're inviting shrinkage. Right. 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 Yes. That's, that's the last thing you want. So yes. I guess at least some kind of. So do you do that now regularly? I'm doing it five to six days a week. What? I'm addicted to it. Day? Yo, I'm so addicted. I'm like a crackhead with this. I'm so addicted because it, it it increases your energy. It makes you. It reduces all the inflammation in your body. So anywhere that you've been sore, you slept wrong, whatever, gone. Mm-hmm. That's amazing to me. I used to take Claritin every day. I'm no longer taking Claritin. It cleared up your allergies. Yes. How does that work? Because the first couple times you go in, you start just feeling your whole head just drain of everything. <laughs> all of a sudden, your ears pop, you're breathing, and you're like, whoa, I, everything's connected. I feel all this. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Dope. Right. It sounds amazing. It sounds like it cures all those things that have been like nagging you for so long you don't know anything's wrong. Except for people. It does not cure the nagging people. Right. (laughs) Right. And that's the biggest problem in your life. It's the biggest problem. If I can walk around with a freeze gun. Right. Just take those nagging people out. Right. Yeah. The other thing that we, yeah, so like for instance, your Uber driver. Any you know, more? I've been boycotting Uber for so long that like every day I get a 50% off coupon, <laughs> right? And I'm like, you guys, once I used up my $500 credit they threw me, yeah. I was like, eh, I'm done with you. You yeah. know what I Especially mean? Especially like, because, it, I mean, if you don't remember, last time you came in, you said that you were getting stalked. Yeah. Oh, yeah. By the, an Uber oh, driver. Yes. Like he was my hanging Uber, out outside your place. He always got me. No matter when I hit the app, he got me. He knew where, and he wouldn't even be close. He'd be right. like 10 blocks away. I'd be like, Wait a second, he accepted the ride and there were 10 other cars closer. Right. You know, that guy. That guy burned me, but you know what? It feels really good to humble it down a bit and support the yellow cab. You go back to the yellow cab. You know now. why? Not they're even always, Lyft. They're always talking on their phone. Yeah. I think they're talking to their cab drivers. Who do you think they talk to? I don't know. I always thought they were like, like I worry. That they're planning to take over America? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I worry I, that I there's some kind of. As well. And I can't tell if that's racist or not, that they're all like, like getting together and planning to like. Because take... it's always another language, but at yeah. least they're not talking to you. Whereas exactly. your Uber driver's like looking in the mirror at you all googly eyed. Right. Like the cab driver, he's just worried you're not going to pay him. There's a little bit of fear I like with the cab driver because they don't have your credit card on file. Right. I got I got <laughs> I got a ride home from a cab driver. And I realized like I, I, all the way back to Westchester because the trains weren't running and all this stuff. And so it was a very odd ride because the cab driver was telling me the whole time that uh, yeah, I think he was trying to get a bigger tip because he was talking about how lonely he gets on the ride back to the city. He's like, I have you with me now, but on the way back, <gasps> it's just going to be me and my cigarette. <laughs> okay, I would have taken my shoelace out and just strangled the guy and drove his car back. That's creepy. But so, like, lonely? What are we talking? Like, yeah. I'm just in here. Like, you do what? Yeah, I don't want It's late at night. Like, Call I your friend who you talk to all day. You got an earpiece? Yeah. Yeah. But he goes, and then uh, I asked probably the worst possible question you can ask a cabbie on a long ride. I go, so what do you do if people just don't pay? <gasps> he started, his heart started palpitating. He goes, he goes, if you don't pay? <laughs> it's 25 years in jail. There's a sticker on the back. <laughs> like, okay. If you don't pay? Yeah. Yeah. That's their biggest fear. And what I realized when I went back to taxis is they're afraid you're going to jump out at any time and dash on the on the dime of paying them. Right. I like that anxiety I put on them. And I, I feel like there's something, especially in New York, far too intimate with Uber about getting it's their it's somebody else's car like it's their personal yeah. car and you're Sometimes like I don't want to there's like pet hair in it or yeah. something and you're like do you have kids like what <laughs> this is is that a stuffed animal like ew like, yeah, yeah I don't want to ride in your car I want this dirty, dirty yellow car cab. That like is just there to give people rides, and like the guy in the front seat could doesn't care if you live or die. No, and there could be a hole in the floor. Yes, and even it's better. weird that I've gone back to that, and I realized that's kind of the nostalgia of New York City. Right, is that grimy, and they're a little reckless. Yes, because you can't give them stars. Right, right. So, so, and I don't care. You, you, you hit somebody. I'm just gonna hop out and get in the next cab. It's before you probably also like it too, because it's before everything was so connected and documented. Like there is no. You're afraid when you're in Uber. You're like, is this connected to my Facebook? and my Twitter and they blah 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 the fear of that and, yeah. and there's like a, a, a trail record of everywhere of every, you've been everything she's at this bowling alley right now right we should all go out there and stalk her exactly cab driver dropped me off it's like I didn't even look back at her once right cab drivers never recognize me either they don't because they don't look right they, they don't, don't care. care they don't care they gotta get their fare and yep. then they gotta move on to the next thing because they don't get it as good deal they gotta pay you know a million dollars for a badge yeah and then they got to go and, and, and collect as many possible fares. And then I also started to feel bad for them because Uber was cutting into their business. And this is something that, like, a lot of immigrants from other countries come here and they invest in that badge. Right. And it really was hurting their business. And I was reading, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go back to them. I'm going to support the man. And I'm going to just not talk to him. Good for you. Yeah, it felt Good great. Good for support him. It's a little grimy and, and I him. love it. Yeah. 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 What do you do in L.A.? I drive. You have your own car now. I have my own car. That's perfect. I drive. I listen to sports radio the whole time. I learn stuff while I'm in the car. I've learned that I can't listen to music. What do you mean you can't? I drive way much faster and more reckless when music is playing, whereas when I'm listening to sports talk, I kind of map out my ride so I'm not getting out of the car when I'm waiting for some stats. Like, right. I'm like an old person when I'm listening to talk radio. Because whereas, you don't want to miss it. Like You're what? like, if I rush the show, I'll miss the rest of the show. But I can't. Yeah. I'm going to sit outside my house because right. in my underground parking, I won't get the service anymore. Right. But 
And music just makes me kind of hype. And then I see a car like mine, and I'm the girl uh-huh. that I'm not gonna lie. Fourth of July, I did get my car up to 125 miles an hour. It always <laughs> makes me happy on, on the 101 because it was early. Uh-huh. No one was on the road. Oh. When young kids pull up next to me, I'm like, y'all fucking think you got something on me? I push push my sport button. Right. Next thing you know, I'm like, I don't double. That's my rule. I learned once: if you double the speed limit, they just take your car. They impound it. You're always ready to compete. Yeah, but yeah. I keep it five miles an hour under the double limit. So it's 65, I don't do 130. That's, that's I, I, okay. Because <laughs> they will, I, it's happened to me once on the 405, the guy's like, we got to get a flatbed. I'm like, why? My car's fine. He's like, you doubled the speed limit, ma'am. So that means they have we, to impound the car? Yeah, and then they take you in the police car and everything. Uh, yeah, that's awkward. So you're like, as long, do you have points on your license or do you not get pulled over I've that been much? pretty good, okay. you know? I'm, the points that I did have, I just sent a ton of Harry and David to my insurance lady <laughs> and she just acted like she never saw them when she renewed me and then eventually they fell off. Perfect. Yeah. Because I had to go through that. I had to hire like a, a, a lawyer uh, to handle a traffic ticket that was so big because it brought me up to like, I think out of 11 points, 11, meaning one more point and they're suspending the license and they have the option of just suspending it anyway. So I was and like, your insurance must be astronomical. The insurance goes up and people are going like, Sam, like you don't, not only do you not drink and drive, you don't even drink. Like, What how- are the tickets for? Speeding. I love it. They're just, just going too fast. So you listen to music. I do. What kind of music do you listen to that gets you that hype? Uh, 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 usually, rap doesn't really get me speeding. Speeding usually. Okay, like good techno or something. No, but if I put on like old like white zombie, Rob Zombie. Mine was usually like Rage Against the Machine. Rage is a That's perfect one. That's it's like, one. I don't know why, my foot just went to the floor and right. I was just really into and it. And it's even worse too, because if you're like like rec- singing along to the songs, which I'm singing along to every song that's in my car, like uh, it's literally song, you're shouting about fuck the police, <laughs> fuck the government, and then you get pulled over and you're like, fuck you. <laughs> your, your adrenaline's still going yeah. and you're like, I'm in this moment. And you also don't hear the sirens as quickly as maybe you should. Right. Or you think they're not for me. Right. You think they're going to blow by you. Right, or it's part of the song. Or it's part of the song. Yeah, yeah. so I've had to be much better lately. Yeah, you got to take that care of that. Right. No points. No suspensions. Don't let that show up. But Mm -mm. it's not often in L.A. that there's enough open road to drive fast. The way I looked at it on 4th of July was, it's Independence Day. Right. If I get pulled over, I'll have a nice talk with a cop. I'll tell them I'm more than willing to pay my ticket. I know what I did. Yeah. But then once in a while, you just got to open it up on your car. It's a celebration. Yeah. It's a celebration. Have you ever run from the cops when you've gotten caught speeding? No. So I was driving to Vegas <laughs> yeah, no, that's years a, ago. It's a terrible idea. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I think I just got clocked at like 120. My girlfriend's like, just get off this road. We'll just sit behind these rocks for a while, right? So I'm like, all right. Sit behind the rocks for like an hour. Dude's waiting for us, of for course. For the hour? Well, we get back on. He's like in the center lane. And then he pulls up behind me, pulls up on her side, pulls up on my side. And all he can get me for is the tint because he didn't actually get me for the initial incident. But he knew it was me. And believe me, we were so scared. (laughs) We had so much weed in the car. That's why you drive to Vegas, you know? So I remember just thinking, all right, this is going to go down. Here's where my money is in case you have to bail me out since I'm the driver. He's like, ma'am, you have a legal tint. I was like, that's it? Yeah. Get this stuff scraped off and put it right back on. No problem. Yeah, you know we're good. Mean? Tint, we're good on. Fine, I'll get that done. Yeah, so yeah. that's all I got. Well, that's it. <laughs> but you did get the hide out from the cops. It was pretty. And it's hot in the desert. You're sitting there just like, how long do you think we should sit here? And then we get on the freeway. He's like, right there. I'm like, man, I knew but, he didn't have anything better to do but wait for us. <laughs> <laughs> but you had all that weed in the car. So like after he goes like, okay, it's a tint. Are you going like, uh, are you sure that... That's it? Yeah. That, I was like, not a problem, buddy. We'll yeah. sit here right now. Don't stand out in the sun, you know? Let's get in your car, write the ticket. We'll be good. It's amazing. So what have you been doing? Because I felt like uh, early on when we started, talk, like a year ago, however long it was when you first did the show, uh, it was more like I'm doing this and that and this and that. And then last time we talked, it felt like being as public as you were being had worn on you. Oh, yeah. And that you had had to become a bit of a... a, a What's it called when you're afraid of big public places? Uh, I'm being a Agoraf- shut-in. Agoraphobic. Agoraphobic. Yes. I'm not really agoraphobic. I'm just really enjoying that I'm going to let myself be out really social like one hard week a month. And then the other three, I get to totally nest. I built a grill all by myself on 4th <laughs> of July. Okay, all by myself. Uh-huh. Ordered on Amazon. Said Wait, two people, one hour. What did you do with your 4th of July? Because right now I have you driving by yourself very fast on the highway. That was after cryotherapy. I went to the gym, cryotherapy, then went home and built my, my grill. 
You didn't you didn't even see anybody on Fourth of July. No. <laughs> and when I went to go get the propane tank the next day, because uh-huh. I wouldn't allow myself to buy it until I assembled the grill, because I'm weird like that. Because I thought if I got it, I would be lazy and never take it out of the box. The guys at Home Depot's like, you know, Fourth of July was yesterday. <laughs> Like, yeah, how could that have missed me? I know. He's like, well, I'm like, I could still use my grill the rest of the year, right? Yeah. I need propane. Right. And guess like, what? Okay. It's L.A. <laughs> it's this weather forever. All year. I have a grill now forever. So I've been grilling, uh-huh. having friends over. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I've narrowed down my life a lot. I do two shows on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio. Right. Two, right, two a week? Two a week okay. now. That's uh, very good. My guest spot, it will be back on The Morning Men. I do tomorrow. And then my fantasy football stuff will be back on during football season. It's great. Writing my blog, driving the traffic for Sirius. Ooh, I got to sit in on a staff meeting today. You did. Yeah, was, was that exciting? So yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Well, there, was a, there was a slideshow with a projector, and I'm like, wow, <laughs> people still use those, and why oh, not? Yeah. You have the equipment, but I was, like, big and was making that noise, and I, I was like... That. I love the idea of, like, you get to, like, sneak into Square Life, <laughs> and you're like, this is so exciting. I've never been in Square yeah, Life. Yeah, it reminded me of, like, something I'd see on set, but I never saw right. anyone actually use it. Like, that's the stuff that we had on set that didn't work, that offices threw away, but we used his props. You're like, I don't understand. The person that's manning this 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 thing, nobody wants to have sex with them. Like, it's weird. They're going to leave their, yeah. their pants suit on, yeah, and nobody even wants them to take it, it off. Works. Yeah. And it works. Yeah. And it actually works. It's, it's not just a prop. Yeah. <laughs> so, um... Writing for the stash and writing the blog. So I'm finding myself just really kind of nesting in. And three weeks is the longest I'd ever been in one place for about 24 years. Wow. Really? Yeah. I've always been bouncing, whether Man. it was on the road. So it, it's been cool. Like, I, I, I'm just, like, really in this nice little, like, pattern, this routine. I love my writing. I find that such a great creative outlet. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, you know, I am i don't mean to – don't everybody get discouraged but the more people I meet and see out and about, the less people I like. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? I was thinking this literally when you walked in, I was watching you. I love I was, those guys. I was watching you through the window. But what happens is, and I've seen this happen with, with other good looking women, is that you walk into some place, right? And you sit down and all of a sudden, and no, no shade no on there. anybody who's doing it, but all of a sudden, like any guy in the proximity, all kind of zap to it. And like, like you can't go anywhere without like so like I can just go somewhere and nobody will talk to me. Well like when I go but, to the gym, the manager always laughs at me because I move around a lot. I, I know I can only be in one place for ten minutes. I'll go to the treadmill where there's no one there. Mm-hmm. Within three minutes, there's eight dudes on the treadmills around exactly. me. Exactly. Then I move over to the free weed. So I have to have my routine down where it's like, all right, I'm ready to bounce from this spot. And then everybody just kind of follows me and people notice it. Like if you're on the <laughs> stepper, you watch this whole thing go down, you're like, but that's how it is for us. You're right. Yeah. It's magnetic. Yeah. So I'm enjoying just kind of like not interacting as much. That would drive me insane. I'd be like, I don't want to be around all everybody. Like I mean, even if you're all saying nice things, it's too many nice things. Like it's, it's, it's annoying too much. as can I swear? You can swear all you I want. I thought so. Yeah. It's annoying as fuck, It man. is, right? And they also just kind of stare at you. And it's it's science project is at first. Then it's like masturbation-ish. Then it's like, what are you thinking about doing to my body when you chop it up? Like, <laughs> right. oh, like, and after they stare for so long and don't break, and you're afraid to look over, because you know the second you do, you'll make eye contact. And to that dude, that means she wants me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. They're just sitting there kind of waiting for a signal. And all you, you can just look, even if, if you smile, if you're like smile, like Done. A, a hello smile. That's Done. It. You're like, oh my God, like. I wear a hat that comes down to here to the gym, <laughs> uh-huh. okay, which is super hot. Who wants to wear a hat to the gym? <laughs> right. It's annoying. But I wear the hat. I walk looking down and hope that I don't walk into anybody. Yeah. Because I, eye contact. Like, I feel like if you look at the wrong guy, he thinks, oh my God, she wants to have sex with me. How close are you to just getting a Nordic track and doing all your workouts at home? Well, I did just put a gym in my house. I thought so. I thought that was going to happen. You got to. But the problem is the cryotherapy is right by my gym. Uh So like when I'm out and about, I'm like, don't be a loser and only drive 20 minutes to go to this place or 10 minutes. (laughs) Go, Go into the gym and like move around a little bit. But I do my yoga. I do all my butt workout at home. Yeah, that's smart. There's just things you can't do in public. Lisa, like I know you. And if I saw you doing like your butt workouts in a gym, you'd probably be like, why is, does Sam want to chop me up? I don't understand. I'd be giving you the same creepy looks. It's just, it is what it is. Certain exercise I don't do in public. I'll go in there and do my jumping jacks. I'll I'll run on the treadmill. I'll do all that. But yeah, I have a spin bike at home. I have a nice set of weights. I have all my exercise balls, my foam roller, my yoga mat, all that good stuff. So it's interesting because you get to the point where you're like, okay, like you like being, you like doing what you're doing as a public figure. 
You like being on the radio. You I like, like talking fantasy on the radio sports. A lot. You like writing. Yeah. But it's like you do the trade off to getting to do this stuff is you do open yourself up yep. to having to deal with this stuff. So you go through like points where you forget how much you like being on radio and all that stuff where you're just like, I don't want to do anything public that anybody will ever have an opinion on ever. I want to go and be in a cubicle. I want to go and do something that nobody notices. I like the radio thing because I can, you know, you don't have to look nice in studio because we don't have fantasy sports. No one's videoing anybody. Nobody cares what we look like. Right. It's usually we're stats people. You know what I mean? So it's right. super casual. I can roll it in jammy jams if I want to. Right. You know what I mean? But it's just, here's what I've realized. Uh-huh. There's a really weird misconception. The first impression from what I did for a living and the only way people know me is they automatically assume that I'm just down to have sex with anybody <laughs> at any time. Like 6 a.m. in the morning, I'm walking to Central Park the other day. And this random dude who must have been wasted from Saturday night comes up to me. He's like, hey, mama, put that tight ass in my hands. Now, I had a good night's sleep, but I'm feeling feisty. <laughs> so I look at him. I'm like, are you fucking sexually harassing me? I'm on my Fitbit at 6.05 in the morning on my Fitbit. Are you kidding me right now? And he kept going. And then I realized maybe he's going to slash my face. And at that point, I ran like a bitch to the park. Like yeah, I did I the right go. thing. I, should leave. <laughs> I, I was should a little leave. sassy that I was like, I think he's crazy. So, but. So is that, have you stopped talking as much? Because before, like even the first time you came in, you were very kind of, without giving names, fairly open about hooking up and sexual exploits and stuff like that. Have you stopped talking as much about that because you don't want people to just assume that you're going to have sex with anybody that you come in contact with? I've kind of really changed and resurfaced my, re-filtered my life and I have less people in it in general. So right. I have a couple nice intimate relationships and right. I'm just going to hold on to them as long as I can, not be out in the mix as much. But yeah, yeah. I have to stop talking about it because it gives people mixed emotions. But the thing is, I was talking about athletes and I look at these putzes that come out <laughs> to me, couldn't even Bowl on right. Wii if they had to, okay? <laughs> on the Wii Network right, bowling. Right. And they think if they got a shot, I'm like, I, I don't know. So now I'm just not going to talk about it at all because it's really. I Which just, is a bummer because, like, I, we, we loved hearing the stories. And I know. Now, but those, the fucking creeps have to ruin it. I know. Because they're not, because they, here's what happens is they get jealous. Because they're not professional athletes. And when they were in high school, they were watching the people that would be professional athletes get the chicks. And now they get older and they watch professional athletes get the chicks. And they're like, well, now that I'm now that I'm older, I can I can do that too, right? And you're like, no, honey. But would you want to get in a wrestling ring with a trained wrestler and go one-on-one with him? No, you wouldn't, Sounds- right? You How- wouldn't you wouldn't take on Brock Lesnar. No, I wouldn't, but I will tell you this. I did compete in a battle royal and I choke slammed somebody. So okay. I am a force to be reckoned with. Okay. You know. But why would you want to get into a bed with me when I'm so much better at it than you are? That's <laughs> what I'm saying. Like, why do guys want to ruin their whole sexual future? Like, once you're with me and I look at you with that level of disappointment because it lasted less than 2.3 seconds because you're going to panic and you're going to either pop or it's going to be like me trying to get rope up a hill. Right. If you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get trying rope to get up a hill. Picture that, okay? Yeah, just tugging and tugging and tugging. Once that happens and you feel shame for the rest of your life, right. and I have this guilt associated to it. Why do you want to go down like that? That's what happens. Don't challenge Kobe to a one-on-one game of horse. You know you're, what I'm saying? You're the Kobe of the bedroom. You, you know. know what you're doing. I know what I'm doing. And it's like most of us don't know. You get by. Don't you? Yeah, exactly. You get by. Exactly. You don't really know what's going on down there, but you think you're pleasing it. It's not leaving you, so you're good. Right. Like I'm a professional broadcaster. In the bedroom, I'm like a good like six minutes start to finish. And, and it's, it's a, fine. It's a great six minutes. It's fine. Everybody involved is satisfied. Everybody's satisfied. It's fine. But you're like, not going marathon style. You're no, not no, popping no. Viagra 30 minutes before nope. waiting for them to pop in. Nope. Six minutes. Doing any of that. So, yeah, it's just kind of changing. Also, I do feel myself changing as I evolve as a woman. Right. And I want to see my friends more. And again, I'm back on, you know, working with some of the young people in my life that I feel have a need. You know, I'm again trying to really help Mary Carey pull her life together, trying to get her to go to church. It's very hard to go to church with somebody whose boobs are bigger than their head. That's right. I really try to... I, I have to really work on the covering of her up, you know, otherwise we're going to have to sit on separate ends and go on different entrances. Like that's the only option I give her. Right. Um, but so I'm just trying to reach out to people and give back to some of those people to help balance out all the ugliness. Is that, ex- yeah. So is that helpful? Cause it, it also must be exhausting. Cause somebody like Mary Carey, who we all know she was on the celebrity rehab show or yeah. whatever. Like she's had lots of ups and downs. We've seen her get clean. We've seen her fall back off. Yep. We've seen her get clean again. Like, does that get exhausting for you? It does, but after I wrote about China, yes, 
and I sent it to Mary mm -hmm. and I said, Mary, I don't want to write about you. Wow. And the reality that I wrote the piece that the average life of a porn star is 37 years old. Which is insane. And it really made me think. Yeah. And it made me think if I can prevent some, I have to try. And I feel like I am a beacon of, of a hope because I got out and I'm happy with my life and I have a career. And if right. I want to be a shut in, I can and I can still work and just breeze in and out of studio. And it's not a big deal. You know, I don't have to be hosting parties or at clubs. And so I feel like I have the ability now to turn back and reach a hand and I should try. Right, right. I mean, but you also have to. I think that maybe, and I don't know, you're more of an expert than I am by a long uh, a long shot, but part of it is, like, in the adult industry, a lot of the girls may not have the mindset that you do. Like, you came in and you said, I want a career outside of this, right. but that means that all the groundwork, I don't get credit for the last 10 years, like, because I wasn't doing groundwork for this. Right. Like, that's, I get my, my name is a name and people will listen to me, but you need to go back to square one and learn and do guest spots and guest spots and guest spots and, get, and take this gig and take that gig and take this gig and actually kind of uh, humble yourself quite a bit. Yeah. And learn a new... And learn a new thing. And also, the whole time I was in the business, I was aware of the fact that I didn't want to get arrested. Right. I didn't want to do anything that was going to cause me not to be able to get a job at a place like Sirius. Think about that. Right, yeah, because if you got a felony on your thing... And that's an issue for a yeah. lot of the girls. So it's like, if you're not thinking about it from ground one, sure, when you get out, you're going to have a lot more obstacles to overcome. I don't have a bunch of kids. Right. You know, all these things that right. didn't happen. I don't have a drug problem. So I just want to be doing those things and, and, and sharing some goodwill. I guess that's why, yeah, that's why you jump on to these women that are young because you're like, no, 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 you have to be thinking about this. Like, I'm not saying get out of the business today. I'm saying act today. As if someday you want to get out of right. the business. Link about tomorrow. Right. Like Rochelle Ryan, big Giants fan, mm -hmm. porn star, great friend of mine. Mm -hmm. We went to the Giants-Cowboys game a couple of years ago. The Cowboys won. Our bet was whoever's team lost, they had to wear the opposing team's clothes for the whole next day. Well, uh -huh. my Cowboys win. I bring her into Sirius and make her wear Cowboys gear. And she's a Giants fan. So this year I reached out to her and I said, listen, I'm teaching you fantasy sports. Mm -hmm. You're going to be in my listener league for my fantasy football show on Monday nights. Mm -hmm. You're going to be at every Monday night call in guest. You can promote your feature booking. She knows football and I want people to see another side of her and it feels really good. Matt knows her. Everyone's met her. I made sure it was a very comfortable thing for the past year before yeah. I brought her in. And I'm excited to offer her a little opportunity outside of her bubble. Now, does it uh, drive you crazy, though, when that offer gets made? And like we work and we work and we're getting there and we're getting there and then we fall way back and it's like, ah. I worked on her for a year to be sure she would be committed. That's what you got to do. You do. Yeah. You do. You yeah. know, she knows about being on time. She knows about all that stuff. So that's all good stuff. It's smart. It's smart. So you're back in New York now. I am. Uh, but you're just back here for a few days. Yeah, I'm going back and forth. You know, I, I don't quite love New York in the summer. It's not super fresh, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> most it, 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 it's very muggy and most of the places smell like Today piss. was awesome. Today was beautiful. Yeah, it wasn't yeah, yeah. hot. Laney and I had dinner outside. It was mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going back and forth. So what were you doing here? Well, I coached a celebrity basketball team on Sunday in the Bronx. Do you, do, do you feel like you're skilled enough to be able to coach a team? Yeah. Did you win? We won. There it is. Then. I yelled at them. And you know what? The other team was way more athletic because I actually built the other team. And then last minute, the company switched the coaching. What? So, like, Ray Rice was on that team. Oh, no. Chris Smith, J.R. Smith's brother. Like, all these athletic build super shooters were on that team. And then they switched us. I looked at my team as, like, a bunch of scrubs. But you know what? They got it done because I was yelling at them about rebounds, yelling at them about being more aggressive. They had heart. Yeah. I was on the court. Like, there's pictures of me just like yelling at them, taking it way too seriously. Kind of good, good. You should <laughs> take it so way too fun, seriously. Though. Yeah, it was so fun. Yeah, yeah. Loved and it. but but I saw you were upset. Like social media got on your case for coaching uh, yeah, a basketball I even, I even, tournament. I even saved some posts. Uh, I deleted some, but then I realized I really can't delete them all. Right. So, so Lisa Ann goes to the Bronx and coaches a basketball team and posts a bunch of pictures. Sounds fine to me. Next day I wake up and I realize we got a lot of racists out there. Why? 
Uh, a lot of comments, derogatory racial comments, because I was taking all these pictures because I was in the Bronx. Of course, now I have AIDS. By the way, a lot of people you now have, on my Instagram. I wasn't oh, going to delete no. those comments either. <laughs> you know she has AIDS. Okay. Oh, shit. I'm leaving that up there because <laughs> yeah. you know what? You should be proud you put that up right, you moron. <laughs> you have AIDS. And That's... so it was so brutal that when I woke up Monday morning and I was reading all this, I was just like mentally disturbed. Like it's it's, you know what? I don't know what is going on with the world. We both know since the last time we saw each other, mm-hmm. shit's kind of falling apart. In general. In general. Absolutely. In general. I We're mean, living in the saddest time you and I've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, we've been I I was I've had to come on the show and shout about the fact that I can't do shows consistently anymore where we're just having fun and goofing on things because there's some Do you world... feel guilty? Do I... this, do you feel kind of guilty when some news breaks and you're doing your show and you're still trying to entertain? I stop. But I you talk feel... about what's okay. going on every time. And it's like, but that's what the thing was. Like, because I don't feel honest. Of course. Enter, do, doing something. Because usually when I'm goofing on stuff, it's stuff that's happening in the news. Right. So it's like, let's then we got to talk about this. But it, the problem is like two or three times a week, yeah. there's a global tragedy. Yeah. And you're going, two or three times. That is the one on? beautiful thing about sports. Mm-hmm. We are asked not to talk about it. We're supposed to delegate what channel on Sirius you can go listen to it. Perfect. It is Perfect. a safe haven. But don't worry. I get it on my timelines. Oh. So I got all the racial hate, what a horrible person I am, all the N-word, all the horrible stuff. So they were just mad that you were hanging out with black guys? I guess. Wow. You know, just, 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 it really shows you. What's weird about people who send nasty messages on Instagram? All their accounts are private. Huh. Like, I can't say fucked up shit back to you. Yeah. You don't have the balls? Like, just open up your gate. Right. Let me get on you. <laughs> Let me find your friends on your Instagram. I'll find your mother, okay? You if will. you weren't private, I would find your mother. You will. I would get her on Facebook, LinkedIn, wherever. I'd show up at her work. Right. And I would be like, this is what your son is up to, and I know that you raised him better than that. You would tell her. I know you did. Good. I am shameful. You need to go home and beat his ass. I had to do one. I almost never, never respond. No, never I don't either. To negative. But... I had to, because a couple weeks ago, it was like, because I don't get home till 2 o'clock in the morning. So it was like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. And I get a Facebook message just saying something like, you're not a good broadcaster and you should quit. And I was like, okay. <gasps> That's actually and even so, meaner than saying like, racial <laughs> random shit that I know doesn't mean anything with I have AIDS. That's even meaner. Right. And so I go, okay. And I click the profile. To troll and see what he does. Of the right? person <laughs> who sent it. And and I really ta- caught one detail. It said, uh dad of two or something and i go i go thank you for the advice i'll look into it but so far i've been pretty successful however you're sending strangers facebook messages at three o'clock in the morning you're probably not a good parent (laughs) did he respond (laughs) he did and it was just it it was just like an immediate like apology but you called him out. Right. And that's right, because he's setting an example for his children. Who's up at 3 o'clock in the morning? They got kids. Who's trolling people on Facebook with kids? Some tweaker. Right. Right. Like, like I I feel like if I had kids, plural. I would never send a bad message, because I think other parents are on my Facebook. Right. And they might see this as well. Like, or get I'd all be of so it. busy, concerned about, like, making sure. You raise your children? I raised, like, good people. So they're not out with handguns killing people yeah, at the park? Yeah, I wouldn't really be worried about, like, what this dude is doing on the radio. I'd be like, okay. The radio show is my time to escape these kids and just like zone out, be entertained by it. Then I can turn it off and go back to raising the kids. That's and it's, it's not like he's stuck in Ohio with one terrestrial radio station. Exactly. You can log in anybody that's serious. Move on. You don't like my show? Listen to exactly. somebody else. But you know what? He likes my show. He does. That's why he was listening. He does. He, yeah. So then the next day. I go out to brunch with my friend Zach Campbell. Okay. Zach Campbell is the ball hawker that caught A Rod's three thousandth ball last year, uh-huh. and there was all that talk. And and he oh, also so, so so what did he do? He caught A Rod's three thousandth ball, and then he held it till I came back in town, so we could take it around the city and take pictures with it. <laughs> <laughs> and then he took it back and he sold it back to the Yankees. Uh-huh. But he gave all the money to a baseball charity for underprivileged children, which he always does. He now, collects all these balls. Why? And people didn't like that he people was... People hate him. And they say that he, like, pushes kids out of the way at the park and he oh. has daddy issues. So now, mind you... Daddy issues. I, right? Isn't that strange? Where did that come from? I, this is... So that I get up, I read all my hateful tweets, I'm like, on my posts, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to see Zach. I film a video with Zach. I interview him in Columbus Circle because Zach convinced me to get active with my YouTube page. Sounds good. He's like, this is a loner activity. 
You can do this alone. You, yeah. to, you can do a video blog. Right. Your fans will still get to see you, but you still don't have to leave your house. So I was right. like, I'm doing this. So he's helping you. So I wanted to interview him and explain to them that he's who brought me this great idea. Oh, people hate him even more than they hate the people <laughs> from the day before. Why? That he and I both have daddy issues. That Why he do- pushes kids out of the way at the park. That he's a horrible person. Like, dude, he has a hobby. And he's also a baseball writer. And I met him through a great baseball book that he wrote. That I read, that I loved, and then I had him as a guest on my show. But it's also like, when did A Rod become this like beloved guy that we, you know what I mean? Like A Rod is A Rod, right? You know? That's weird too. Right? So for for forty eight hours, I'm dealing with just these people that I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know how bored everybody is. I don't know about you, but when you order something on Amazon and you don't like it, what do you do? You return it. Yeah, you just, or I, I'm like, fuck. And do you then ever just, write a review about it? No, I get too much going on. For, no. But I will tell you, I've had this weird, creepy fascination lately that I want to tell you about. Tell me. I'm starting to love reading Amazon reviews. Just in general? I would never write one. Okay. But I love to read them, and I think people could date off of Amazon reviews because <laughs> some people tell such a good story about an assembly gone wrong or something they ordered that they thought would be different, and just their vocabulary, I'm like... You know, this this guy seems dashing. Right, right. You liked it. <laughs> Dude, like, oh, it seems like I seems... And I troll on Amazon on my couch. Oh and my read god. Reviews. That's like next level like social media addiction. Like Well, that's what I don't like, want to look at social media, but I still want to be reading in the post. I've already read it ten times right. today and every other news network I've read. You just love people's opinions. I kind of do, because they're yeah. yeah, they're they're interesting and they're helpful. Right. And like for the grill. It said it takes two people an hour, and there were a bunch of... I read about, you know, probably 45, 50 reviews. (laughs) And so it dedicated my time to set my stopwatch on my phone from the second I put the first slice in the box. Now you're in competition. I'm in competition with people I've never met before. Of course. So I did it in 49 minutes. By yourself? Yes. Wow. (laughs) I know how to build shit. My grandfather taught me how to build shit. So that's pretty much... I'll give you credit for 25 minutes, because you cut it in half because there's only one of you. Right. So if there were two of you, you'd think 25 minutes. Right. You're going, you're literally less than half the time you got it done. Yeah. That's impressive. It was very impressive. No music. All my sound notifications were off so I wouldn't be distracted by a text. Of course. You know, I was like, this is important. I was like, this is just weird things that I do to entertain myself. I feel like you need to like build like Legos or something. I would like to build something better than Legos. Like what? Well, I've built almost all my furniture, uh-huh. you know, not Ikea furniture, like good Real furniture. furniture. Yeah. yeah. And I've been actually building a nice wall of photos. My grandfather, before he died, gave me all of his old war photos. You know what you need to do? Woodworking. That's what he did. And that's what I'd like to do. I knew it. I knew it. I love the smell of it. it reminds I knew me of this it. woodworking garage. You need to get yourself a garage. Do you have a garage at your place? I do. Get turn Black and Decker. Yeah, I know the, all about turn it. Turn the garage. I know all about it. Into a woodworking Saws. place. You start small. You right. make some cutting boards for your right. friends. Then some bird feeders. But you know too. Jewelry like you, boxes. You start as a hobby, blah blah blah. But then once you're kind of over, like even doing the radio stuff, because ah, oh, people are bitching about my fantasy sports stuff now. <laughs> Nothing's fun anymore. <laughs> I'm going into my garage. I'm gonna build bird feeders and I'm gonna sell them on Etsy, and that's my Etsy? life. Etsy, you know about Etsy. Of course, I know Etsy's about Etsy. Etsy's amazing, yeah. right? Etsy is one site that makes you almost want to have children because the stuff is so beautiful on there for kids. <laughs> when my friends have kids, I'm like, yes, I get to go shop at Etsy and buy them stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, the weird yeah. obsession with reading the Amazon reviews. I had to admit it to you. But so, so when you're not reading Amazon reviews. I you blocked like a thousand people. Yeah, it was really nasty. Why was it so specific? Like it's weird to me though. Like First I feel all, like you you if celebrity I'm in a group coaching picture with a bunch of basketball players at a celebrity event. Does that mean I'm gang banging all of them? Do I have to hear that for the rest of my life? No, I don't. I I would not have assumed if I saw that photo, I'd be like, oh yeah, she was coaching that thing. Right, I'm holding a trophy. You know, it, it's, <laughs> real, it's, it's it's like. <laughs> Oh, did she fuck all those guys? Is that why there was the a lot of that. There was a lot of she definitely has a ton of STDs. There right. was a lot of how disgusting I am. How much has been inside? How much semen has been inside me? Just, just like it was just hard to wake up Monday morning and be like, oh, literally. <laughs> I would say, <laughs> just knives, just <laughs> knives in your chest. I would say probably seventy to eighty percent, maybe, and that may be lowballing of those comments were from people who were upset that their semen didn't get to be inside of you. 100%. Now, weirdest thing is, yeah. a friend took a video of me of the backside of me celebrating for the very celebratory shot. It's a okay. little video. My first video I ever posted on Instagram. Hey, it has 64,000 views. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, it's good for something. I wish I was monetizing that. Yeah. But 
the AIDS thing. That's going too far to yeah. wish someone AIDS. You don't. I mean, you don't have it. You no, won't. I don't think you know, you're going to get I it. I still get tested. You do, just in case. Just in case, and because I want to donate blood. So, right. you know, when you've been in the industry, or they ask you, have you ever been a sex worker? And right. if you have, so it's like, I want to go in, I go in with my binder, mm-hmm. and it has the printout of my you know, <laughs> last three years of tests, and I'm super proud of it, you, you know? Are. But it's just a good thing to do, why, right? Why not? It's not uh, like, yeah. I'm, you know. But it was just very hateful. So in that moment, should we read my list before the break or after your break? Do you have no, a break? No, no, go ahead. So I put together a little list of things. Okay, now, what's this list now? This is a list of things that I think people could do when they feel compelled to send hateful messages like, you're not a good broadcaster. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I think... Before you do that, right. before you say, I have AIDS, or I have STDs, or Zach Campbell is... and I have daddy issues, or right. he pushes kids out of the way, he would never push a kid. By the way... He's never pushed a kid? No, okay. he would never push a kid. He's okay. such a nice guy. Okay. Um, here are my ideas, everybody, and I want you to really think about them. Really soak them in. And I also want you to know that I'm your fucking mother's age and stop saying rude shit to me. Okay? <laughs> That's fair. Because you know what? When we were younger, right. if you saw someone your mom's age, you treated them like, oh, she's my mom, mom's age. I better be nice to her. You're all the need- door. I have to tell you something. I still to this day have issues being comfortable calling adults by their first name, even though I'm an adult. You like, would, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, I'm so Mr. Mrs. Mr. Mrs. Mr. Mrs. When I would when I would interact with a kid that would call an adult by their first name, even when I was 10 years old, I'm like, are you not raised? Like, I still you, call my aunts and uncles aunt and uncle, whatever always, their name is. Always. right? And all my other cousins, the younger cousins don't do that anymore. And I'm like, no, you address them properly. That's your uncle. My sister went through this phase like a year ago where she was calling my parents by their first name. <gasps> and it like, bothered you, right? I, I, I mean, I was like, so the minute she left the room, I'm like. I looked at my mom. Why are you mom. accepting that? I looked at my mom. I was like, hey, Bobby, what's that all about? <laughs> like, what are we doing here? And she was like, I, I don't know why she started doing that. I don't know. And so, I mean, we just gave her shit until she was like, she kind of was like, oh, yeah, I, I'm going to stop yeah. doing that. Just you, so you only get one mom and dad. Enjoy right. calling your mom and dad. Right, you know? right. But here are some of my ideas, Sam, and let me know what you think of these. Okay, these are ideas that you can do instead of trolling a person like Lisa Ann and sending her hateful messages about having AIDS and gang banging uh, her, her. And saying the N word in writing is so inappropriate. Right. Saying racial things is so inappropriate. And I and what I said today, you may have seen on my YouTube video, is mm-hmm. when you put those things in writing and you put them out there to the world, that is part of you. And that's who you represent as a person. Yeah. And that's what I think is really the breakdown of society right now. What we're seeing is all this animosity and anger. So to avoid that, here are my ideas. Oh, okay. This is great. One, mm-hmm. make your bed. I make Just, my bed every day, and do? I know a lot of people don't make their bed. Uh-huh. Make your bed and make it nice. Right. Right, because you learn to do that when you're a kid, but, like, so many adults now, the, the millennial man-child thing is bigger than it's been with any other generation. You're right. So they're like, if nobody's, if no person is going to tell me I have to make my bed, right. I won't make the bed. They say they only make it, I've surveyed this, mm-hmm. they say they only make it when they first clean their sheets. And that's so it. that they make it once and then they don't make it again. Oh, I couldn't start my day. Right. And it's like you feel fuller, you feel more like an adult, you feel like a human being all yeah, of a sudden. Yeah, it's like you're at a hotel and you know you go in your room nice yes. and made up. Uh, next, clean your room. I'm sure your room's a mess because you sent me dick pics and there was laundry <laughs> on the floor. So, you know, before the racial hate and before right. you bust on me and Zach and then you just decide to photograph that wet willy that doesn't even look good. I don't know why you're taking pictures of it. Most right. of them are not attractive. Stop photographing them, dude. Just and like you know what? Pasty noodles. face facts. Yeah. I've seen a lot of penises. You have. Why do people think I need to see more? Right, right. Like you've seen the best I've ones. I've seen it. I've you've seen it already. You've seen the biggest, not sure the brightest, something new. the prettiest. Yeah. At this point, it's like sending sending Jordan, like, "Hey, look at my jump shot," and he's like, "Yeah, look at I've mine. Se- like, right. I've done it or all. Look at my sneakers." Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Jordan's like, "I've uh, seen them." You could do your laundry, which Whoa. is on the floor for your dick pic. You could do the dishes. Oh yeah. You could go in the kitchen and you could find all the matching lids for your Tupperware. Yeah. <laughs> so you're saying you're saying these are all things that people can do because none of them have their life together. None of them. Yeah. You could read a book. From whoa. cover to cover, whoa, 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 which could, whoa, whoa. six months of mean tweets erased because it's going to take these kids six months yeah. to commit to reading a book. There's a lot more than 140 characters in a book. I don't know. That may be a little, a little far. <laughs> you can now sign up to get paid to do surveys online. I see these <laughs> ads all the time on Google. So, Why not do that instead of fucking with me? Right. If you got to click and type and blah, 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 get paid. I mean, you masturbated to me for free because you stole the porn on the internet. Right. I never asked you for anything, but just like step back, yo. And you know what? Don't ask me to have sex with you. Right. Rules should be, I get to ask. 
That's fair. And you know what? Chivalry's not dead. You know, that's... If I ask you, we have sex. If you ask me first, it's dead in the water. Right. Even if for that moment I was considering it, as soon as you ask, I can't do it now. Right. That, that makes should sense be a to law. Me. That makes sense to me. You could learn a language. Whoa. Babble. There's all these apps. Rosetta Stone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could learn to cook on YouTube. There are YouTube videos where you learn to cook. And you know what? There are YouTube videos where hot chicks are teaching you to cook. In lingerie and bikinis. I found them. Yes. <laughs> uh, you could also organize your closets and donate the extra stuff to Goodwill. Well, all right. Like, we're really stretching here. That is, a, that is a nice thing to do. I mean, if you have extra stuff, you could give it to somebody who needs it, or you could just burn it. And then that way you don't help anyone. You could burn it, but if you live in California, you could take out the Hollywood sign. Did you see there's a brush fire right now, right by the Hollywood sign? The Hollywood sign. sign is burning to the ground. Yes, I, I, I can't did see believe that. it. No. I did see that. Yeah. My first porn memory. Remember, <laughs> my first scene, I'm having the scene. I'm looking at the people I don't know in the yard watching me, and I'm looking at the Hollywood sign. If that thing goes, <laughs> I'm, half my memory is gone. <laughs> That was your I made it moment. I also suggest you could call your parents instead of telling me horrible things. Your grandparents. You could walk or wash your dog. And uh, if you have a cat, you could clean the litter box. So this is a nice, I can email this out, I can tweet this out to you people. Maybe you should. These are just some suggestions (laughs) that would make your life better. Because before, like, there are ways that make your apartment smell less like cat shit that don't involve any racial slurs. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't Febreze everything. No, you can't. Febreze doesn't do it all. Because, you know, when they Febreze in the house on the commercial, you right. can tell that house is generally clean. Right. <laughs> and the, the Febreze is just like, oh, last minute thing I cleaned yesterday. But look, right. You know what I mean? Right. So those are my suggestions. We need to make the world a better place. Well, those are great. I feel like that's almost like a political platform. I, I think so, too. You know, that that's something... Should I reach out to Palin and see if she wants to get this thing going? <laughs> I'm surprised that Donald didn't reach out to you to be why? a vice president. But why didn't he reach out to her? I wanted it so bad. It would have just added so much for all of us. Right, right. I feel like... And I, and I, I think... Because you wouldn't have gone back into porn. No, but I would have watched all this and laughed. And you could have easily... Like, can you imagine if you jump on your YouTube channel and just do some Sarah Palin videos? They're not even pornographic. But it's like, now the girl from Nayland Palin is doing like Sarah Palin skits on YouTube. That's hilarious. I am going to read my book on YouTube, and I'm going to dress as Sarah Palin for the Sarah Palin chapter. Are you really? That's amazing. What do you think of that idea? I'd love it. You're going to read it. So you're going to do like a YouTube book on tape? I am. Because I think it'll be really cool for me to connect my facial expressions and kind of like talk with my hands like I do. I mean, I'm still going to do an audio book, but this is going to be the first step in like getting me in the groove of it. And I think it'll be fun. Is that the first book on YouTube? I think it will be. I've never heard of anybody doing that. Oh, everybody out there that's writing a book right this second, all you porno girls are going to finish your book tomorrow. <laughs> Don't jump and beat me to this. <laughs> so so what do you do? Like chapter one, chapter two? There's yeah, I'm going to break it down. Yeah. I love that. Different updates. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. And I'll do like one a week. Yeah. And I th- and for the Sarah Palin one, believe it or not, I just found a box because uh, I'm depornifying my house still. You are. Yeah. There's a lot of porn in the nooks and crannies of my house. I found an entire box uh-huh. of Sarah Palin Halloween masks, but it's my <laughs> face. <laughs> really? And the eyes poke out so you can see and everything. And so now when my friends come to visit, I don't tell them I'm going to wear it. And so like where they come to the door, I open it. I've got this mask on. They love it. They're like, we're going to hang out these things all night. So are you getting rid of everything, all the porn stuff? Yeah, I've been, uh, I've been dousing it out. I've been, yeah, I'm getting rid of a lot of it. I'm sending some cool stuff, like, to my, to a couple fans that I've interacted with for years. I sent some of my awards. To some of the girls that I know are still active in the business, I've sent them some costumes. Yeah. Some guys are buying some stuff that I'm selling off of a site, but I'm just like, You don't want just, anything around anymore. Yeah, I just don't need 42,000 DVDs, you right, know what I mean? It's like right. excessive, and I also don't need uh, five closets of lingerie and stripper shoes, because they're just like, when, not I'm not wearing anymore. plastic shoes anymore. Right, right, One right. of those things I gave up. And there's also, I think, therapeutically, there's something about moving on to the next step yes. that's like, this step is gone. Yes. Right? It feels I mean, especially great. if you're getting rid of like, the, you're getting rid of trophies and everything? Well, some trophies I'm keeping. Like but what trophy I, are you going to keep? Well, I had about 40. That's amazing. And some of them were just like, not dissing anybody, but they were like jinky little plaques, you know what I mean, with engravement. Still, to somebody, it means something. To me, I'm like, "Mm, this thing's going to be, what do you call it, Kindle when you're trying to light a fire? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, like Kindling. (laughs) Not the Kindling, not the Kindle you read, but, you know, so little things like that. Um, And old photos. I found a ton of old photos from when I first got in the business, and I've been sending them to fans. Wow. And it's been fun because I've been able to keep the secret and not tell them they're in the mail. 
So oh, wow. I'll mail them on like a Monday from the post office. So they just and get like, something for a package from Lisa Ann. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. So it's been it feel, it's a good feeling. Right, right. It's a great feeling. That's what feeling. you're talking about. You're like, okay, I'm getting rid of all this porn stuff, but it's not this negative thing where I'm like, I don't know. It's like, let's actually yeah. get rid of this stuff that does nothing for me anymore. Now there was and a give it there to was a who enjoy it. An area of stuff that was just like a trunk of like stripper shoes that I guess when they would break, I would take them home from the road and throw them in this closet. And I just, and this was a pile. I filled up my entire dumpster uh-huh. at my place uh-huh. with stripper shoes. And I so wanted to sit out there with my camera and wait for the trash guys to open it. Think like, <laughs> like a ton of prostitutes got killed here or yeah. they're like hostages, prostitute hostages, yeah. all size six shoe. <laughs> and, and, but you know, I just, I kept throwing them in there and, th- and there was like fluorescent green, you know, all clear heels went. Right. They were just busted up, and I filled the dumpster. That's amazing. Yeah, it was fun. That's amazing. But it does feel good. It does, right? You have to you you have to constantly be on a quest for for maintaining happiness. To me, like every time, that's what impresses me about you. I think is that you come in and you're always like happy and strong about what you're doing and like motivated and it's always the right plan like it's never one of these like you know you hear whether it's a porn star or it could even be an ex wrestler it could be somebody that's leaving this very specialized business and they think that they'll be able to do this thing that's not going to work out for right. them and they think they're going to bring their fan base with them that like they don't want to see you doing that they like right. you doing this right. but you've you never come in with a plan like that. Anytime you've got something, it's, it's like, just, yeah, it's just oh, like, it's works. slow bits of moving slow. on. Slow. It's slow bits. Cause you know, the big goal is one thing, but what I've learned is setting small little goals yes. and it can be fun. You're finding little treasures. Like I have found, I found a notebook mm-hmm. of all of my first newspaper ads that I used to cut out when I was a stripper on the road. And I was so excited to see <laughs> myself were? in the sports page <laughs> and I would use a glue stick because it's like one of those old school notebooks. And I must've just got, and I mean like, That is so hilarious to me that I saved that. And it made me think back that time. Like, this is 1992, 93. I'm out on the road. I'm so proud. It's cool that I saved that stuff. And going through it is just like, wow, that's so funny. Yeah. At that 20 plus years ago, I was doing this. So that's kind of cool stuff that I can send to people, too. Right, right. You're getting rid of that, too. But what is happening as well? Back page. Do you know what this is? Well, I was about to say, I feel like... uh, You are also having a second source of income because I was out in L.A. and I was like, I need to get a hooker for myself. And I go on to back pages to find somebody that will spend the evening with me. And I'm like, oh, there's my friend Lisa Ann. I didn't know she was doing this. But mind you, she's also in 800 other states and countries, cities, (laughs) countries all over the world the same weekend. Right. You're you're willing to travel for the highest bidder, I guess. So you're prostituting yourself now, I've heard. It's very funny. One morning I wake up about six weeks ago and my whole timeline is people sending me things like, are you in Baltimore like right now? Are you in Denver like right now? Are you here? And I'm like, what does all this mean? So. I weirdly turned into like an old person because I clicked on the link and then I was like afraid it was going to do something to my computer because I'm like, oh my God, this is a prostitution website. Is it going to put cookies on my computer? Like, is this legal? And then in order to dive in and find out who this person is and being an imposter of me, I would have had to put a credit card down. I'm like, eh, I'm not really willing. So I'm just going to try and get these deleted. So reach out to Backpage. You have to do each city individually. What do they have separate? Because Backpages is like the big uh, prostitute website, I get, or escort website. I, I don't want to, you know, whatever, right. whatever it's called. But that's whatever they call it, escorts. You know what we're talking yeah, we about? Know lady of the night is what they used to lady call it. Lady of the night. It's where you find. <laughs> Let's call it that. Yeah, it's where so, you find yeah. yourself a lady of the night, and you scroll through, and Lisa Ann's name and photo are there, and it literally you sent me the ad. Yeah, and it, it says said, my accurate age. It says, says we my... have Lisa Ann. I'm here. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. here. So at first I thought maybe I should put a bounty on this situation. And maybe I should offer, like, a free book to the first person who gets a selfie with this person who's imposing as me. But then I thought, what if something bad comes out of this? Right. And it's, like, a serial killer or worse, a scammer that takes money off their credit card. You see, like, a selfie of a guy with a severed head. This was her. That's why I decided not to do that. Ready for my autograph picture, Lisa. This was her. And I felt so bad because I could tell how many people were really excited. Yeah. But it's like... Do you think I would be grinding at this hustle and then doing that on the side and risking my gig at serious? But I know this is definitely someone in the business. There's definitely still some people fucking with me a bit in oh the business. Oh, my God. They can't get By over the way, it. Can you imagine if a program director calls you in, if Steve Cohen or whoever's in charge of sports, like, calls you in. I let and them goes, know right away. He goes, Lisa, are you... 
are you are you prostituting yourself? And you're like, yeah, why? What's the? We hired you here. You can't be a prostitute, Lisa. You didn't say that. You didn't say. Like, it wasn't in my contract. Hey. I really did. Is it a conflict? Is that wrong? Yeah. I could use the George. Yeah. Is that wrong? <laughs> so yeah, these ads are popping up everywhere. See, this is what this is what's amazing to me, and what I was kind of getting at before was that like what's impressive is like every time you got all these different things that I've watched. I'm assaulted every day. Not only <laughs> shit just coming at me. Would they crush most people? But I've literally watched people get crushed by this stuff. This is the stuff that destroys people in any form of entertainment or public industry. Right. And so the fact that, like, you know, you were coming in here and you're talking about, like, the people that were, like, stalking you and harassing you at your house and breaking into your house and doing that whole thing. You talked about on the YouTube video, you said that your family has now disowned you for the last year. Yeah. And at this point— And this is from the harassers from the past in the business who had emergency contact information of my parents. Oh, my. Because it was and, on your, on your yeah. porn work yeah. papers yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And so once they got assaulted with photos being plastered outside their house— And this never happened my whole career until I retired. Well, that's what I was going to say. And that's the, is the worst part yeah. is we made it to this far, and I've built this new life for myself. And and and, and that— and their phones and like I re all I knew was one day my mom said she texted me and she goes uh, my phone is getting nothing but hardcore photos of you texted to me and I can't block the numbers fast enough and wow. and then it, and then I started to hear what was going on a little bit more and the next thing you know I tried to reach everybody and all their phone numbers are changed I sent the mail return to sender I've sent emails my emails blocked my parents want nothing to do with me out of how hard they were attacked because of course they're just not looking at it like I am like eventually this will go away right and also by the way you're a victim right yeah like just as much as they are you're the victim here but it's like that to me is like the 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 scary part of watching when we talk about people like helping people out right. and then them falling down it's like at this point for you to be able to successfully transition out of adult entertainment, which doesn't happen. I know. Like, it's so rare to see that happen. And now. And it has to happen. There's a ton of girls. We're going to have to see this happen more. We, you have to. I can't be the only. You have to. I have to be the pace car for everybody else. Which is, and, and then, and now, after, like you said, after all that, to then your family decides, well, we're done. It's yeah. like. Really? But all you can do is be like, I have to keep fighting. I tell, yeah. I tell people. Who are entering not adult entertainment, but just the entertainment industry in general, especially women. I'm like, look, you have to go in every single day. You wake up, you put your armor on, and you go out yeah. and you bulldoze and you fight through everything. Whatever gets thrown at you, put your armor on and fight through it because it destroys people. It does. Like these ads, you're right. A yes. lot of people yeah. would completely crumble. If they're like, it says I'm a prostitute. I can't take this. And I'm sure. And at first I looked at it and I was like, of course there was that moment where it sucked. Yes. But here's what I go back to. There's an episode of 30 Rock where Jenna Maroney has a stalker mm -hmm. and then her stalker stalk stops stalking her mm -hmm. and she's so sad that she <laughs> goes back and stalks him. And so I go and I rewatch that anytime I'm getting a little mental yeah. because I say to myself like, you know what? Yeah. When this stuff stops, clearly you don't matter anymore. <laughs> right. Right. And you're like, so I want to matter. I want to matter. <laughs> <laughs> when people stop hating me. Right. What am I going to do? Right. Right. I won't have stories for you. I know. There won't be fake Facebooks open. Like tonight before I came over, I had a half an hour. Whenever I have a half an hour. Troll Facebook, <laughs> send twelve requests to block people to to, oh to actually God. report people who are impersonating me, and then the, the nothing makes me happier than forty eight hours going by, and I get maybe out of the twelve, Facebook will come back with three that are now deleted and funneled in mine because like yes they were impersonated. The rest of them are like this doesn't fall under the standards, so then I gotta find one photo where there's like a nipple hanging out on their page, <laughs> which I will do. You have to and just keep like, like there's nobody nudity gets on here, and that's <laughs> doesn't allow that. So I diligently, whenever I have standstill time, yeah. that I'm, I'm fighting Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for imposters. And, and now I don't even do it on the computer. For some reason, it makes me madder on the computer. If my feet are up and I watch TV and I'm on the phone, I'm like, I'll just breeze through this. It's really right. no big deal. Some people, do, some people do Pokemon Go. You fight identity theft. Yeah. <laughs> and that's your thing. How do you feel about Pokemon Go? You know, I, I think it's very stupid, <laughs> but I'm at level eight. So I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I, 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 you were not in that Central Park debacle the no, other night. No, but it was so funny. I watched the video. I did too. Yeah, a ton like, of times. In the middle, <laughs> in the middle of the night, it was like Saturday night, 
and you saw, like, you know how sometimes there are these videos in New York City where they're going into a kitchen and you turn the lights on and just dozens of rats scurry. Yeah. You've seen those. It looked exactly like that except humans because... Apparently there was some rare Pokemon it was a rare one, right? on the other side of the park. And so everybody just all like dozens, maybe hundreds of people run all across the park, all trying to get this rare Pokemon. I, it's it's a fascination. I did almost run over three eleven year olds the other night under the underpass getting onto the four oh five because it was eleven o'clock at night, twelve o'clock, it's dark, and they dart out in front of my car and I thought, I mean, I don't want to hit anything, uh -huh. but like so I slam on my brakes and my car kinda goes up on the curb a bit and I, I scrape my rim, which made me very upset. Yeah. Then the lady behind me almost rear ends me, she's honking at me, and I get out and I'm like, I totally hadn't caught on to what about this Pokemon thing yet. Sure. And I'm like what the fuck are you kids doing? First of all, out the sleep, where your parents? And they both, they all just looked at me like right away, like, we're catching Pokemon. It's like it was normal to them. I'm like, you do realize you ran out in front of a car that's merging onto a freeway that most likely wouldn't hit. If I was drinking, you'd be dead right now. And one like, of you would be dead, and yeah, the other one, she would have killed. But you do realize there was a Charizard across the street. They were so, to me, to them, they saw nothing wrong with it. They were and, like, and you know what? And that's the thing. Like, I they're was looking, outraged. I they're was like, you at, see my rim? You should be washing my car for the next three years. And you're sitting there going like, you would have died. And they're going like, waiting well, you know, for old lady to stop talking <laughs> yes, yes. so we can go back to doing what we know is right. They did look at right. me like I was an old lady because they said I didn't pronounce Pokemon right. Oh, my God. <laughs> How do you say it? Like Pokemon, I don't it's know. So I, I guess I say it weird, but they were like, "Well, you don't say it right. Do you play?" I'm like, "Of course <laughs> I don't play." <laughs> Just had found out about it. Like it yeah, came on like, the scene fast too. You're like, I would have hit you with my car, and they're like, "You don't even know how to say Pokemon. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about." I'm like, "How old are you guys? Eleven. <laughs> right? They know it all. Yeah, like, they're done. They're good. It's just like I can't beat you. I'll go to jail. Leave right. it be. <laughs> Lady behind me still honking. Get your car out of the way. I'm like. Her kids are probably out catching Pokemons too. It's, it's a fascination. It did, and I, I liked. I mean, I downloaded it just because, like, uh, like stupid Adrian and the people around here were playing it, and like, and also, you know, call. I need to. I like to be aware, of course, of what's it's in the event. zeitgeist. It, this yeah. is a current event, right? But I do. Here's what I think: people are like, these kids are playing Pokemons at funerals. And these kids are <laughs> well, playing. That's awesome. Pokemon. That's kind of awesome. And, but they're doing. They're they're acting like they're playing Pokemon in all these inappropriate places. Well, it's better than watching porn. But I'm, if they're not right. playing Pokemon, they're going to be watching Pornhub. I'm going, there is no way that you could tell me that those kids wouldn't have been texting? Watching, watching porn, texting, tweeting. Yeah. Like, this isn't about Pokemon. No one They've plays, all got their faces yeah, in, no in their phones No one's playing anyway. words with friends anymore, are they? I mean, I still play. It was too educational. Oh, it too so it went flat in the water. Yeah. I have one friend I play with. <laughs> still. I have a private account. And my I won't say my screen name because it's a private account. But Who's it's a friend? Great, uh, my girlfriend Haley. Oh, and so, so you and Haley, just and we play. have three games going at a time, <laughs> and so I just go on there, you know, and, and I love it, but I don't want it to be a lot of people. Right. I don't right. want like sometimes weird people come up, they're like like randoms like want to play. I'm like, <gasps> but it's really it's really interesting because when I walk, I walk to like the train station at like one o'clock in the morning, whatever it is, I walk through New York. Are there a lot of Pokemon on out? the way to Grand Central? I'm not looking so much for Pokemon's. I'm looking. I'm hunting Pokemasters because I walk into Grand Central. It is everybody I pass at one o'clock in the morning, so and these a are adults. Poke Master is a person Pokemon. playing Pokemon. I think so, but I'm that's not hundred percent. That's your title, like a dungeon master, like it, a bondage master. It's a Poke Master, <laughs> like, like a bondage master. Yeah. Okay, is that right, Adrian? It would be a Poke Trainer. Oh, so what's yeah, a Poke? Yeah. How do you get to be a Poke Master? Well, I, I think that means you have all the Pokemon. Oh, my mistake. And you've trained them all to their max. My mistake. I are don't. you a Poke Master yet? No. Okay. I'm on like level four. Oh, I'm five. fucking kicking your ass. That's dude. amazing. Yeah. Well, yeah, if you're out and about like that, but like for me, do you think right. I need to subject myself to being out near randos? Can you imagine not that? paying attention? Yeah, like you're staring at your phone. And you my look, phone's yeah. up here. No. Boobs are being grabbed right off the bat. Right. We're grabbing her boobs. We're never gonna see her again. She's right. probably gonna punch. I just want to touch them once. Right, right, right. Normal stuff. Do you get grabbed at like people touch my butt a lot? They a, do a lot more than I liked. Yeah. yeah, it really bothers me. Oh, I'm. I'm happy to say that I'm finally getting a, a, a nice police escort from the gate at the airport to baggage to the cab. Regularly. Regularly now. Wow. Which How'd is you fantastic. Pull that off? Uh just over a couple like weird a lot of butt grabbing at the airport. Really? Yeah. Like it's appropriate or something. A Did lot the TSA of... ever get handsy when they're checking you? No, but I had a nice TSA incident in Los Angeles. You did? Yes. What happened? 
So over about, I did a great study. I, I gathered data. Mm. Uh, over about a, a two, three month period, I did this. Every trip back and forth, there were TSA agents at PreCheck. They were like tweeting at me and Instagramming at me when I would go through. So now I'm like a hostage in the airport because they've just sent out a public message that says, Hey, Lisa Ann, great to see you at TSA. Ugh. Like, douchebag, you work at the airport. Right. Stop taking pictures of me. The TSA sending agents messages. are... Yeah. Oh, my. So I compiled all the data. <laughs> of course she did. And then I reached out to TSA on people, Twitter. See, people underestimate, number one, how smart you are, and number two, how willing you are to use your time to do willing. this. You're very willing. Totally. And that's the dangerous part. And I was putting things in my carry-on bag that were getting through, like full-size cans of hairspray. Oh, you were ready. And then I would do the little selfie photo of me with the can of hairspray. <laughs> and then the guy would come over and say, you can't have that. And I'm like, I can because it already made it through because none of you guys are paying attention. Wow. So I did a nice thing for TSA. I helped them by compiling all the data, getting the information to the person to email, mm -hmm. a nice phone conference call. Oh, cool. Talked about training and how they could make it better. And you that did. Most people are more afraid of people knowing when they're coming and going because let's face it, we don't need the sign up like, hey, no one's at my house right now. Come rob me. Exactly. If you're a girl traveling alone, I don't need to get to my gate and have 30 tools there wanting to touch my butt and take photos. Because okay? that's what they do. That's what they do. So I wanted to just ixnay that, but I didn't want to make a scene. So I also, they would all send me their phone numbers. So when I <laughs> sent TSA, when I sent the like head officer, like, do you think I ever asked for this dude's phone number? Like, this guy, this I must have attached a good 50 photos oh my with God. the first email because I was just like, my friends knew I was up to this. I would mm -hmm. give them updates every week. I'm like, I got six more great screen grabs. Wait oh. till you see these messages. The file I'm going to put together. <laughs> and I was nice with them about it because I just think young people use their phones recklessly uh -huh. and they don't want that either. Like, listen, I said to the one agent, I said, you know, you realize that if somebody was going to do something to a plane, they could follow a celebrity. Right. And the people are so wrapped up staring at the celebrity that they could probably get something through security. Look, I'm getting 18 ounces of hairspray through here. What's next? Right. Right. What's next? All I need if is a I lighter. If I was MacGyver? Yes. I, all I need is a lighter. You're just shooting fireballs at people done. all of a sudden. Over. Plane's done. Yeah. We're all done. 9-11 got done with box cutters. You think <laughs> I can't do that shit with fireballs? With hairspray? Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I pick projects. You're right. I will do the service. Right. I will put the time in. And it's my own little secret, you know, PI skills. You right. know what I mean? I, I just feel like and I'm making the world a better place by doing these things. Plus, you get fucked with so much. It's nice to do the fucking with back. It is. It is. And it's nice not to do it to face like, you know what? I will I will go to your master, po your, pokey <laughs> your pokey master. And your pokey master TSA will handle this situation. And they were really nice about it. And and it was it was a good thing to do because some people would go and press charges. Right. Some people would go back and freak out. I don't want to be that person, but I do want to say like, hey, slow down. Yes. On the, you know, my butt gets touched enough. But now you have a police escort in the airport. Yeah, isn't Amazing. that fantastic? That's it. You've made it. I really love, I like seeing them and talking to them, but I want it to look like I'm in trouble. And so, like, I want it to look like I got arrested on the plane and they're walking me to baggage to get my, but it never works gotcha. out that way. Gotcha. Because so we're always it's not catching like, up. Yeah. And it's a friend. I'm like, guys, I just want to look like like I got in trouble on the plane, you like know? That's badass. Yeah, yeah. So wouldn't that be dope? It'd be awesome. Yeah, nobody messes with you when you're with cops. No, no. Mm -hmm. Well, they can't. No, nobody's touching your butt anymore. No one's do touching Do people go for, like, when they go for photos or whatever in the airport, wherever, outside the airport, do they go for the reach around and stuff like that? Every reach around possible. So first try is always this. I'm going to put my hand on her shoulder, and then I'm just going to reach down like that. <laughs> That's not fucking happening, douchebaggery. <laughs> so I know I have to grab it, and I have oh to put the hand God. right down here. As soon as the hand's right down here, no! he starts opening his fingers to see if he can get it. And usually I have a backpack or something, so I know I've got to drop everything because I've got to be in full assault mode. <laughs> Oh, right? I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then they want to like either kiss you, like they'll do the selfie. And I don't like the selfie because I'm afraid of head lice and bed bugs. It's gross. Right? And they're usually sweaty. So and they want to be really close. And then right as I'm ready to smile, I'm looking at the camera and I'll see them. And they're like, like they'll just try uh. to mouth kiss me, face kiss me. I have their breath on me. And it's like, I want to burn my face. You get a photo. If, if you take a photo with, with somebody like Lisa Ann, there's a good chance you're going to get a little bit of accidental side boob. It happens. It and by happens. the way, that's enough. But don't touch it. No, let it happen. <laughs> like, like, like if you give me when some I accidental side boob. When I see them coming yeah. down like oh. this, and try, like if it's a guy with long arms, I see him coming down like this. Mother I'm being nice. And right away, of course, I just want to get him in the balls like in some self-defense well, class. <laughs> it's literally sexual assault. And that's why I've kind of stopped doing it. 
Yeah, it's because I'm opening myself up, up yes. for that risk. And you can't blame when they're that close. The kissing thing, though, is uh, the worst. Because uh, usually the imagine. guy that's ready to lay one on you is a guy that you would never want to lay one on you. No. <laughs> no. So, yeah, those are my, uh, I got some issues. Yeah. But people feel. I can't believe how you honestly, it, like, exist. I'm impressed by your existence. My like, friends feel that one day I'm going to, my friend's biggest fear is that I'm either going to be killed by a fan or mm-hmm. a stalker or like some situation's going to break out and I'm going to lose my mind over like, it's going to be the one boob grab that makes me like go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm gonna like, but it is what it is. Yeah. And in my mind, I'm always saying things like, I bet you this motherfucker shares a Netflix password. Right. For some reason, that calms me down. Right. Because I'm glad they made it a crime this week. You like that. I love it. <laughs> Why? Because contribute. People are putting right. their hard work into that right. product. It's so cheap. Right. Cut off your cable. Right. Or the HBO Go. Whatever it is you're stealing. Yeah. In my mind, I'll say all these things. Like, this motherfucker doesn't even have HBO. And he's stealing fucking Netflix password. Right. And, and by he's the way, sharing internet with his neighbor. And he's the one that's going on Twitter and being like, the show sucks. Yes. <laughs> I watched the new Netflix show. This is a bad season of Orange is the New Black. Yeah, it's your fucking friend's password. You're not even I, paying for it. I, I mean, what is Netflix? Seven nine nine eight ninety nine. Yeah, like, you know, like, it's really not a lot. Pitch in. These are all the things that help people right. continue to create amazing product. Right. So I believe in paying for the things that we, we I mean, enjoy. I hear ev- very rarely. I think people know better than to tell me. But when somebody comes up to me and they go, oh, yeah, no, I used my friend's password for the WWE Network. <sighs> Don't talk to me. You I'm, know what I mean? It Get makes me judge me. you. There's some things where yeah. I'm like, don't tell me things that's going to make me look at you differently because right. I'll never forgive that. Right, right. Like, My support. moral compass doesn't allow it. I don't think you're not a good person. I've never stole music. You haven't. No. How about you? Well, it, Netflix came out when I was in high school. So like the context of I'm stealing music doesn't occur to you. Right. As soon as iTunes came out, 99 cents a song, that's when no more stealing music. I even pay for Pandora. You do. And I will tell you, one of the funniest things is how many people I know that make way more money, like a ton of athletes are like, I'm not fucking paying for Pandora. I'm like, you make so <laughs> much money. You have a Lamborghini and you won't be like, was it $35 a year to not listen to those crazy commercials? Right. And see, I usually listen to like tranquil music, mm-hmm. spa music. And when I wasn't paying for it, all of a sudden this commercial will come on. Of course, I think a stalker's in my house. Like right. I'm like jumping under the bed, just like hide now. What's going on? Oh, it's a commercial on Pandora. I was right. like, Right. It's over now. <laughs> right. Yeah, and like people like like steal boot like download bootleg movies. And it's like you could literally get it for ten dollars on iTunes and you can own it. It's not even a rental. You own it forever. And you can wait. You just gotta wait the two weeks. I agree with that. I don't do any of that stuff. I'll pre order the movie and it's set bad it. karma. I agree. It's, we agree. Yeah. 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 We agree on that. But you know, I appreciate Sam. I appreciate the fact that you remind me. That I do kind of manage the insanity in my oh life. Oh my God, okay? it's, it's, it's <laughs> lunacy. So what do you do to center yourself? How do you maintain this center and this focus of like, this is what I'm here to do? Because the things that happen to you, it would drive most people to act manically. Yeah, I know. And as much That's as what like, I worry about with the other girls. Right. And like you kind of like have a manic speech pattern just because you're so high energy in this story and that story. And it's been three months since I've seen you. So I got to But- you could tell in the way you conduct business that it's not manic. It's focused and thought out. So how do you stop yourself? I meditate a lot. You do. I have a very strong routine in the morning where I get up and I make my bed and I listen to my spa music and I don't touch my phones. And I think I also have started going back to church regularly. I've started to pray regularly. And I've just found a way to make that peace. Mm-hmm. I, I, I spend a lot of time alone, too. So when I do all these crazy things, then I'll go and hibernate a little bit where yes. it's like I'm just going to sit on my patio and read for hours in the sun. Right. And I find my ways. I have my small group of friends that I go to their house. And we just chill and talk and watch TV and hang out and do nothing together. Right. I'm not an a real big restaurant, go out to like in LA. I'm not going out to a scene restaurant where mm-hmm. everyone's like dressed so nice and I'm super casual. I'm in my cargoes, flip flops. That's what LA is to me. It's casual. Right. New York is dressier. I see. You know? I see. And so I just find my way to pull it all back in. And I also accept that I'm grateful to have the life that I have. I love where I live. I have a great opportunity with Sirius. I'm back and forth between New York. I wouldn't have any of this if I didn't. It's this. That's the downside. The yeah. downside is what I put out there created this misconception of me wanting to have sex with everybody <laughs> and think that it's okay to say racist things to me. But at the same time. And grab your ass and boobs. I can afford Netflix. Yes. 
Yes, and at the end of the day, that's the American dream, isn't it? It is. It is, and you've achieved it. Lisa, it's always great to talk to you. Where where can we uh, uh, point any... Uh, you can tweet at me, which I've been off Twitter all day, and it's felt fantastic. Well, where, what's your YouTube channel? It's this The is Real the Lisa thing. Ann. Yes, The Real, the real Lisa, Lisa Ann. Ann on YouTube. And you're I'm be... building this thing up, man. Yeah. yeah what do you think of this idea? I think it's great. And I, lo- I really like the YouTube book thing. Yeah. I think that that's smart. And you'd be surprised. Like, people are like... You know, it has to be two minutes or three minutes on YouTube or stuff. That's not the true. That's not true. It's not true. I mean, you've seen. Remember, we did. I, I posted the interview with you that was like almost an hour long. Everyone watched it, and they watched it's the whole thing. Got over hundred thousand views on it. It's ridiculous. Yeah, they'll watch it. Exactly. And I could break it up into segments, but yep, the YouTube page, the real Lisa Ann. You can find it on my Twitter timeline as well, real Lisa Ann. My Instagram, real Lisa Ann, and uh, my radio shows. I'm just, you know, it's great to be back, and I, 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 I hope. That all this stuff is entertaining to everyone. We know it's going to keep happening, and I will continue to put notes in my phone. Excellent. And you know what? I'll be out in L.A. next week. Okay. So maybe I'll see you then? Yeah. Awesome. We will be back. Thank you, Lisa Ann. We will have more Sam Roberts Show right after this. Thanks for watching another video from Sam Roberts Show. There's no the, and there's an apostrophe after the S. It's possessive. We upload videos every day, so make sure you, right there below, hit the subscribe button. Follow me on social media. All the links are right there. Just do it.